right, it's going to be a crowded field. Get ready. Everybody, everybody and their uncle seems to be jumping into the Republican race for president. But um, nobody's coming close to Trump so far in the polls. Nobody's voted. They're just polls. So let's talk about this a little bit. Today, Senator Scott, a very smart, lovely man, threw his hat in the ring, joining us now to talk about all this. Mark Simone, WOR radio host, and the great Pete Hegseth, co-host of Fox & Friends Weekend and author of Battle for the American Mind, Uprooting a Century of Miseducation. Gentlemen, we appreciate it very much. Mm -hmm. Senator Scott's a good man, Pete. I mean, he's a very good man. Very good man. And I think his speech today was very impressive. That's what I heard. He's, he's formidable. Uh, you know, he, no script, talked personally about his own background. I think he's, he's a dynamic candidate who will only go up in the polls and is good for the Republican Party. And that's why I think you saw Donald Trump react the way that he did with his statement today saying, hey, welcome to the race. You know, we work together on opportunity zones. Yep. That's a good... I don't think, if, if anything, his entrance into the campaign probably helps Donald Trump. <laughs> Because it takes away from <coughs> DeSantis, who has not been going up, even though he's soon to announce. You know, I was in the middle of that opportunity zone, uh, and that was a very big Trump initiative that never gets any coverage or credit. Nobody ever talks about that. I mean, it directly helped not only inner cities, it also helped rural areas. Now, Senator Scott was point man in the Senate mm -hmm. and was extremely helpful. Um, Mark Simone, uh, Governor Sununu of New Hampshire is entering the race. And one of your favorites, Governor Christie, uh, former <laughs> Governor Christie of New Jersey. Oh, no. I didn't make you hear some water if you oh, need it. I'm choking to death. I know. Uh, that's what happens when you close the George Washington Bridge to get at the mayor of Leonia. <laughs> um, anyway, you've got two. One former governor of New Jersey, one current governor of New Hampshire. You like their chances? Everybody's running for something different. Some are running for president. Some are running for vice president. Some are running for cabinet posts. Some are running for 2028. 20, Christie's just running to desperately to stay relevant somehow. He's, he hasn't been governor for eight years. Uh, he's a commentator on a Sunday show. It's not much of a resume to run for anything right now. What about Sununu? Uh, 2028. He'll be great there. Uh, listen, Trump is so far ahead right now. Uh, I know he likes Tim Scott as a vice presidential choice. Mm -hmm. And I think he wants Scott in the race. There's a Trump vote and there's an anti-Trump vote. You get six or seven candidates. They divide up the anti-Trump vote so that nobody can win. Yeah, so a bit like 2016 in that respect. Yeah. There was some talk uh, earlier that they would try to avoid that, but that's the same, th same thing's happening this year that happened um, in 2016. Uh, very much so. Uh, I would say Sanu who. I mean, I, I, there's, there's no constituency <laughs> right now. Maybe there's a future relevancy. What's interesting to note, you look at that group of candidates right there. Mm -hmm. I think I'm, maybe, maybe Christie would be the exception, but you're right. He's, Christie's running against Trump. That would be yeah. the only rationale there's nobody in that lineup who ran in 2016 and there were a lot of promising candidates who thought they were the future of the republican party in 2016 what happened to them in 2016 they got run over by the trump train mm -hmm. and they said mm, no thank you trying to do that again in 2024 even though a lot of them still have ambitions for the future this is a precarious moment for ron DeSantis, who obviously has been a very successful governor of florida who's going ahead with this announcement uh, but hasn't proven yet to, to have that breakthrough speed a lot of people thought he would. If you run in 24 and don't run well, it diminishes your opportunity to run in 28, as you saw from a lot of candidates in 2016. There's mm -hmm. a lot of risk here with a lot of downside because Trump, the biggest two in-kind donors to Donald Trump at this point are the FBI and Elvin Bragg. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> That's brutal. Um, I'm waiting for DeSantis to show me an economic prosperity agenda. Now, Art Laffer is going to come on after you fellas. We're going to talk more specifically about that. This is going to be a pocketbook election. This is going to be a kitchen table election. And the candidate who has a good, strong, pro-growth, pro-prosperity um, agenda is going to win. That is my view. That's Laffer's view. That's the supply side wing of the party. That's our view, but it works every time. Not, I'm not discounting other issues, the border, Ukraine, and so forth, but that is going to be the driving message. Now, I do not see Governor DeSantis's economic growth message. He may have one. He may unfurl it on whenever he's going to announce Thursday or Friday or whenever, but so far, not a... It's all about attacking a company in his state named Disney. He's already won the issue that they're up to the third grade. You can't start talking about sex and gender. And he won't let up. 
conservative free market people don't attack businesses, and they do promote jobs and business. He hadn't done that. That's right. My sermon's over. No, one guy did. I'm open to him. I'm just saying, where is it? One guy's got that message, Donald Trump, and uh, he did it. He did it for four years. He's Aaron Judge in that area. He did it. So it's clearly and, him. And, you know, everything about the Florida that you love, DeSantis inherited the no state tax, all that stuff. He's done a great job of running it, but most of that was inherited. Uh, you watch uh, uh, DeSantis turn uh, Disney into World War III. Imagine what he would do with Putin. Uh, I, this guy has got problems. He's, he'd be great in 2028. Wait till then. I don't understand the Putin reference. Could you just walk me through that briefly? You're in a fight with Disney. You just blow it up so that they're pulling a, a center out of the state. You, you make a, a disaster out of it. You got to negotiate nicely, oh, get it done. Oh. So imagine what he would do with Putin. Who knows what he would well, turn that into? And I think Mark's making a substantive point there, too, that part of his rollout that was so poor from DeSantis was being on both sides of the Ukraine issue. Trump's been very clear about it. It didn't happen under my watch, and it wouldn't have happened, and I don't want to start foreign wars. DeSantis kind of tiptoed on the establishment route and then went another direction, and people said, we don't know who we've got here. So a lot of people... So I'll go, now go back to Kellyanne Conway, very smart political analyst, ran Trump, uh, Pence in 2016. Her argument with DeSantis... And, it, and by the way, she's not against him. I'm not against him. I'm just waiting to see more. But her argument is too much woke... Not enough prosperity. And I, I, I think, you know, we always talk horse race, what the polling numbers are. But substantively, I think that has hurt him in the polls. Well, he was banking on it helping him in the primaries, which it, it should. I mean, we're in this moment where this woke nonsense which, is happening the, everywhere. The woke, you mean? Yes. But Trump has always had a pulse for where people, I mean, from the border to trade, mm -hmm. to the economy, to foreign wars. He spoke to things that, that hit people exactly where they're at and resonated with why we need leadership in Washington. The, you know, Vivek has done a great job focusing mm -hmm. on the woke side mm -hmm. and making that a big part of his campaign. I just don't think there's enough there, per se, to defeat the, the iron grip that Trump has on the base because he said he would do things and he did it. Taking on Disney, I don't think, is enough to create that contrast. Um, just one last thing on substance. DeSantis is going to attack Trump in his um, announcement speech for being a big spender. You think that'll resonate? No, I don't think so. Listen, Trump is a proven success as president as far as the economy. Proven. Everybody knows that. Uh, a recent poll showed even Democrats are nostalgic for the Trump years as far as their pocketbook, their wallet. He, he's got, DeSantis, too many gimmicks, too much. Uh, he's... he's Got all the drama of Trump without the charm or the humor. That's his problem. Mike, <laughs> Mike, Pence, that was good. Mike Pence said on this show last week that um, Trump agrees with Joe Biden. Social Security and Medicare are going bankrupt, and neither will do anything about it. Does that resonate, Pig Hex? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, spending is a big problem in Washington. Both That's what parts we were are talking about the whole first segment. You saw those two smart congressmen. Ab both parties are guilty on that spending ledger. Mm -hmm. I don't think a Republican nominee is going to win on some uh, argument about how we reform Medicare and Social Security. It's just not that kind of moment. So why get all the political liability for it? right now. I, don't, I think that's the kind of argument from Mike Pence that would have played 10 years ago inside a Republican primary, but it's basically irrelevant in, in today's Republican primary. I know primary. you went to college in New Jersey. Do you know where Leonia, New Jersey is <laughs> and why that's important? I don't. Fort Lee. Sorry. Oh, I thought it was Leonia. It's a section of Fort Lee, New oh, Jersey. Oh, that's right. The, Christie caused the massive traffic jam there. Where? Uh, Fort Lee, Leonia. I thought he shut down the George Washington Bridge. Well, that, that's that area. That's the town. Uh, snarling he's against, traffic. From... He's against bridges. What can I tell you? <laughs> it's not for, it wasn't for the infrastructure bill, and he's against bridges, particularly the joy. Sorry, that was a joke. Probably not a good joke. I, I know Chris Christie's a nice guy sometimes. Anyway, Mark Simone, thank you, Pete X.